a little bit higher. So as we can see, oil prices are going higher, but not enough. I would like to welcome Youssef Al-Shamari, Editor-in-Chief of Usergy. Good evening, Youssef, and thank you for joining me. Uh, good evening, Alexander. Thank you for having me. Well, I would like to start uh, with the Chinese uh, macro data because it's a very important China reported uh, yesterday or the, the premier of China Li reported yesterday that their GDP target went down uh, from 6% to 6.5 deficit GDP ratio 2.8% up from 2.6% in uh, 2018 which is not good because uh, it means that the debt is going higher 2019 CPI target is at 3% as we can see from our, our billboard and tax cuts and fees for a tri uh, trillion yuan which echoes 289.28 billion uh, dollars. On the other side, Yusef, last week China reported a negative PMI data at 49.2 and we know that under the 50 level the economy is in a contraction and above the 50 level it's in expansion so China is definitely in contraction we were not really surprised of the of the lowered growth forecast but here is my question if the major importer of crude oil like China is going down the economy is absolutely um, going in in a little bit in in the negative territory if I can say like that what, what is the impact on oil market? What is going to be the impact on oil market? And do you believe there is one? Um, certainly. Um, uh, there has been some signs since the beginning of the year about the uh, slow or, or slowing economic growth in China, uh, in the, especially in the first half of 2019. Uh, major reasons was first the uh, Chinese uh, New Year in February, which has uh, led to a slowing economic growth down from 6.8 to 6.5, as you have mentioned. And uh, in addition, they, there's been a decline in the number of sales of cars in 2019. However, the Chinese uh, oil demand is still high, not as high as the previous year, for example, but it continues to be strong despite the slowing economic growth. And a major reason for uh, it certainly has an impact on the oil market, the Chinese economy, but the Chinese economy is also impacted by the tr trade deal between China and the United States. Um, so far, there's been still not a clear image whether the, uh, there will be a reconciliation between the U.S. and China. But if a reconciliation has happened, certainly it's going to uh, accelerate the economic growth of China. So possible reasons for decline or uh, reducing the forecast for Chinese economy uh, is the uh, unclear uh, uh, situation between China and the U.S. in terms of the trade deal and uh, the possible uh, decline in the sales of the number of cars, enhanced efficiency of uh, uh, consumer cons 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 consumption of oil and these, uh, certainly they will certainly have an impact on the oil market. Well, we are witnessing also a geopolitical crisis uh, almost all around. We have one in Venezuela, in Libya, in Nigeria, in Iran, not to mention Iran. But I would like to focus your attention on Venezuela because the opposition leader, Juan Guaido, returned to a cheering crowd in the capital's main airport on Monday uh, despite government threats uh, to arrest him energizing his supporters in a political showdown with President Nicolas Maduro, as you can see from our images. And he said, we are stronger than ever before. A smiling Mr. Guaido said at the airport, we are going to end the Maduro government in Venezuela very soon. Of course, the crowd was, was very happy because more than uh, 3.4 million people have fled a profound humanitarian crisis. 
and in most of the people they were cases are dying from starvation they lost many many kilos so here is my question in case of democratic transition in Venezuela which is the most likely scenario so far what is going to be the impact on the crude oil market um, certainly Venezuela has had a major impact on oil market in terms of the uh, supplies coming from OPEC. Um, currently, the, uh, the decline has been about 700,000 barrels. It's expected to go down below 500,000 barrels in the second half of 2019. And a democratic transition in Venezuela, as there, there are different scenarios. Uh, it's either going to be a messy transition whereby you may have an increase in the uh, Venezuelan production, but it will not be uh, as high as it used to be before the crisis. It would take at least uh, more than a year for Venezuela to return to business as usual. So there's the uh, a messy transition this day, which could bring the uh, oil production of Venezuela to have just above 600,000 barrels by 2020, or let's say a negotiated transition which is more democratic, and that could bring the production to above a million barrels by 2020. If Maduro hangs on to power, then the, uh, you would, we would see like a flat no increase in the production that will continue to decrease at the, uh, at the end of 2019, and it will keep possibly it will remain as it is up to, 20, up to the end of the 2020, given the U.S. sanctions on the Venezuelan regime. And so, the uh, what's going to do, going this impact on the oil market? OPEC is already having a cut of about 1.2 million barrels. So, there, considering this cut will, will is contributed by involuntary contribution from Venezuela, given the political unrest there. And so, I don't think the uh, the the the, uh, the cuts in Venezuela will uh, impact on the cuts from OPEC. However, they will if OPEC is going to increase its production. The political unrest in Venezuela will lead to more uh, uncertainty over the supply coming from OPEC, and again, that could play a role in increasing the prices over the next uh, month or so. So, any uh, the, uh, if political transition happens, it will bring more hope for Venezuela supply to come back on stream on the market. That will be uh, certainly it will be good for the market, but any increase in supplies could uh, bring prices down. But it, it continued disruption in, uh, from Venezuela will lead to more uncertainty, bringing more uh, prices up. Well, so hopefully there is going to be a democratic transition for Venezuela at least. Certainly, we we all hope that it's been uh, a very. Uh, a situation that has uh, played a very major uncertainty over the, not just the market, but also the people of Venezuela, and we hope then that they will reach a uh, political uh, stability very soon. Right. I would like to ask you another question. The Wall Street Journal reported that the major U.S. oil producers would double production in, in Permian Basin in the, the next five Years, I speak specifically for Chevron, up to 900,000 barrels per day, and of course ExxonMobil, the other giant, up uh, up to 1 million barrels per day of oil and gas. On the other side, OPEC is trying to stabilize price, to fix them, to have gains, because Saudi Arabia and all the other countries need prices at least from 60 to 70 dollars per barrel and we do see that this is not um, 
not like that so far. So do you think, considering that the shale oil is going into huge expansion in the United States, and, and this is the another approval uh, for what I'm saying, sorry, proof for what I'm saying, do you think that the OPEC is going to manage to drain the oversupply of the markets uh, in the next month, for example, before they are at their meeting? Um, uh, certainly, uh, the increase in shale oil from the Permian Basin um, could lead to oversupplies in the market. Um, it is expected that the uh, shale oil could rise to reach 20 million barrels a day, uh, and that is equivalent to the production of both Saudi Arabia and Russia. It's, it's like 20% of global oil demand or, and uh, also supplies. Um, however, I don't think the rise of, of shale will be very, very quick from now until the first half or the end of the first half of 2019. I think it will take time. And if demand continues to rise, then there's a possibility that even the increase of, of supplies of shale oil will not lead to a decline in prices that OPEC may w w be willing to see because we're having, having a healthy demand. This has happened in uh, when uh, the uh, prices continue to increase despite an increase in shale oil production. So the increase in shale oil production. I don't hear you only. very well. I don't hear you very well. Can you hear me? I'll, not so good. Um, uh, now? Yes. Uh, so any increase in the production in shale oil is not necessarily uh, will lead to a decline in the production uh, in the price of the oil. Uh, so that's my expectations uh, for now. Uh, OPEC, regarding the OPEC, this is highly likely that OPEC will decide on uh, extending the cut, the 1.2 million barrels a day, giving some uh, media reports that I have uh, seen of the top state. And can, uh, giving that time, I think, uh, yes, they, they could, OPEC will be, will enable OPEC and it will enable the removal of any potential of our supplies from the market uh, the next half of 2019. Let me ask you one last question regarding uh, the crude oil. Today, um, today we know that uh, there is the uh, Geneva Motor Show and today uh, the Saudi Arabia state giant Saudi Aramco was there and said that the switch to electric vehicles will not impact heavily oil demand. Do you agree with that, the, the switch to electric vehicles? Because the main topic of the Geneva Motor Show, of course, is the switch of electric vehicles and how this is going to change the automotive sector and the business as a whole. So do you think there is going to be an impact on the oil demand or you rather think that, like Saudi Aramco, that there is not going to be? Um, uh, the electric mobility is a fantastic idea. Uh, it's uh, certainly uh, playing a key role and in enhancing the environmental sustainability of the transport sector. However, the growth and sales of electric vehicles is not so high can, given the size of the global uh, fleet of the conventional vehicles, uh, conventional combustion vehicles. And we see, for example, currently we have around 5 million uh, electric vehicles on the road, compared with 1.2 billion conventional cars on the road. So the, the competition is not really there yet. Uh, that's from the current, uh, current situation. Looking into the future, even if the technology uh, the electric vehicle technology exponentially rises in its sales. It is not expected to lead to a peak demand in oil because oil is not only used as uh, road transport. 
that means, for example, the heavy duty transfer, which is a major consumer of diesel, look into the uh, jet fuel sector, the emerging sector of petrochemicals. These are all uh, uh, why uh, the, the demand growth in these other sectors is expected to exceed the demand growth from the world transport sector. So these are the main reasons why I don't think uh, rise in electric vehicles can lead to a huge uh, demand in oil. However, I think it will, it will have a, a fair share from the global transport, uh, transport energy demand. Yes, it will occupy part of it, but I don't think it will take over oil demand within the next 20 years. Thank you very much, Yusuf Al Shamari, editor in chief at Usergy. Thank you for joining us this evening. My pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Alexander. Have a great evening, Yusuf.